All right, quick practice for unit five, grade five. And I highly suggest that you take, um, for lessons one, two, and three, you take a moment to read these excerpt from Dr. Karen Fusen, where she talks a little bit about the um, reasoning behind the methods and which one we're going to use for these quick practices. Specifically, these quick practices are set up to continue to help students with their place value understanding and the expanded and the place value sections methods, where students write out the full number instead of just the shortcut of putting a number in one particular place um, section so that they don't have the zeros, right? That's digit by digit. So you can do that, but in her recommendation is let's start with the place value sections and or the expanded, write the full number to support the place value learning of our students. And then as students start to see the connection and they want to go more and more towards the digit by digit, you can transition your quick practice if you feel like they're ready for it. Otherwise, it's going to probably support your students that still need the expanded method to keep it um, using all of the zeros. Uh, because then the digit by digit kids are okay leaving them off. The ones that aren't okay leaving it off, the digit by digit might be confusing for them. So you make the decision best uh, that fits your needs for your students. So let's read the equation together. I'd always have students read the equation. 4,500 divided by seven. Boys and girls, where would I put the first digit in the quotient? And students should put up a finger, one, two, three, or four. So I'm going to, as a student leader or as the um, leader here, I might go ahead and put, let's say we'll put it here. And that means that all of these would be turned to zeros. And I would say thumbs up or thumbs down. So all of the students are putting their fingers up for one, two, three, or four. The student leaders already placed it there. So now I say, do you agree or disagree? If students put thumbs up, then we move on. If students put thumbs down, then we have to reevaluate. Because seven times 6,000 is 42,000. So I actually need to move this and make this one six. So where would the first digit go? It would go in the second spot. It's gonna go in the hundred spot. Seven, everyone say it with me, seven times 600 is 4,200. I can do that. Boys and girls, read it with me. 726 divided by nine. Where would the first digit go in the quotient? class and they might all say one, two, or three. I can place it here. I put made an error on the first one because they're supposed to always ask if they agree or disagree. And so planting an error is not a, a terrible idea, right? So if they say the second, then I'm gonna put my digit here. Um, if you want the student leaders to say it, then I probably would. So the directions in the slide don't have you do that. I would probably say 726 divided by nine. Boys and girls, think about it. What's the first digit? Class. Eight, boys and girls, which place will it go in? Think about it, one, two, three, or four. Class, two, boys and girls, what's my number in the quotient? Class, 80. Boys and girls, 80 times nine. Class, 720, move on. Boys and girls, read it with me. 8,120 divided by four. Boys and girls, what's the first number in the quotient? Think about it. Class two, boys and girls, what place does it go in? One, two, three, or four? Class two, uh, one, boys and girls, what's the first number in the quotient? Class 2,000. 2,000 times four equals class 8,000. You move on to the next example. Okay, so um, you can see that we vary in numbers here about where we're going to go. Of course, I did it in place value sections, so I put the full number, and I changed the script here just a bit, but you can follow just the script if your students are catching on and they can go that quickly. Um, I just know that our students are still looking at what those math facts are, so if they're not fluent with them, giving them a moment just to come up with that first digit, and then um, talking about the place of the digit, and then filling it in. I added a couple sentence stems after that of just let's complete this now and actually say what that full um, number would be. So you'll get three of those. You see that you get three then again for this um, second lesson and you get three then for the third lesson. Once we get to lesson four, now we're gonna change the quick. For lessons four through eight, now we're gonna get to our double digit divisors. So you can see that for each lesson, once again, you have different colors for each set of lessons. Boys and girls, read it with me. 8,120 divided by 34. 
Now, ideally, they're just going to put up a finger for where that first number goes in. That's the most advanced level of this. If you need to scaffold it back, now you're going to have to scaffold the different steps to create the procedural fluency. So it might be first step is, boys and girls, what will we round 34 to? Class, 30. Boys and girls, what will be the first number in the quotient? Class, and they would say two. Boys and girls, count by 30s. 30, 60, 90, right? Three is too many, we're gonna go with 60. Boys and girls, what place will we put it in? Class, two. So if we put it here, and we know we're going to take it out two times, my answer is, everyone, 200. Boys and girls, um, read the next equation because we, we won't do 200 times 34 for obvious reasons. We're not going to do that mental math. You could say 200 times 30, right? And then you could um, go that direction um, and get 6,000, but we want them to move through how am I going to get this first digit? That's really the point of this quick practice. So again, should they be able to just say, um, read it 8,120 divided by 34, where would I put the first digit? They should all say, Right, and then the student leader can put it there. But it's also assuming that we're all on the same page and that we know that the first digit's even two and we know we should round this to 34. So remember that quick practice is to build automaticity and fluency with these skills. So if there's some of those skills that they're not fluent in, now's the time to practice it. We're not going through the entire equation. We're not gonna do all of the work. We're just rehearsing those first initial steps that tend to be the toughest or prove to be the toughest. So then we would go to the next one, 657 divided by 18. Where will I put the first digit? If students don't know, boys and girls, where will I round 18? 20. Boys and girls, where will I put the first, or what is the first digit? Think about it. Class, three. Boys and girls, where will it go? Class, two. Boys and girls, what's the first number in the quotient? Oh, class, 30. Okay, so that we'll continue with that for um, the remainder of these slides. All right, for lesson nine, now we're going to go into dividing with decimals. So having a decimal dividing by a decimal. Uh, and you can see that there's lots of different examples here, uh, lots of uh, scripts that you can have students go through. Um, but really all of that came down to a slide such as this that matches very um, nicely the lessons that you do here. So remember all of these blue slides are going to be kind of to train the students or the teacher's background information. You can skip down then to uh, slide number 44 and then notice that all of these slides now keep going all the way to the yellow slide which is lesson 10 which means that all of the slides above this are just for one lesson. Now, you may not do that many. There's enough there though that if you get the rhythm of this, that students would be able to do multiple examples. There's also enough there that if you need to keep them for subsequent lessons and continue to revisit it, you can. So the first slide of each set of slides, so every um, new set of problems has two slides. The first one is just to refresh students on why we can do what we're doing up here on the top. Um, row. So I would have students work in partners, maybe collaborative groups, um, and it's we would read this together. We would say 8 and 4 tenths divided by 4 tenths is the same as 8 and 4 tenths divided by 4 tenths. Why do we get to write this for A? Why is that true? Boys and girls can talk about it, and they can say, because really when we use that fraction bar, it's also like dividing. So using this symbol and this symbol are really the same things. Okay, that's what we want to get from them, but you have the orange box that you can either delete or just move. So relating to correct ways to write division. We can write division both ways. All right, for B, why can we say that the white, eight and four tenths divided by zero and four tenths is the same as eight and four tenths divided by four tenths times one? Talk to your neighbor, okay? They're gonna talk, if someone calls out, multiplying by one does not change the number. So we can do that because it's nothing changed. Okay, so you can see that each one of these progresses because we're ultimately trying to get kids to see, which is, so if we can multiply by one, 10 over 10 is also one. So we should be able to multiply it both the numerator and the denominator by one. So uh, creating that equivalent fraction, but also giving us a whole number as that divisor. So this visual is progressive to 
show students that really we could do this um, and it's not changing the division. So we're not just learning a new procedure of, oh, everyone just multiply by 10. We can actually do it and it is technically the same problem. So for each one of them, you'll remove the orange boxes um, to show that this is all um, what we're allowed to do. And then um, you'll get all the way to the back. Once you do that, then you get a slide here that has students um, more do the choral response. So this is more about students thinking, coming up with an answer. You could do it in partners. You could also just have to call on students and have them defend it, defend each one of these, and then quickly get to the actual practice of this. Remember, generally in quick practice, we don't call on one student. It really is about choral response. So we have eight and four tenths divided by zero and four tenths is the same as 84 divided by four. By what did we multiply 4 tenths and 8 and 4 tenths by in order to create two whole numbers? Class, 10. Boys and girls, what happened here? And students should say that the digits shifted to the left because we multiplied by 10, which means the decimal went on the other side of 4 tenths, making it 4, and the decimal went on the other side of 4 tenths, making it 84. Boys and girls, what happened here? When they move the pink, now the decimal point is after the four. So you can see the first one is what happened to the first divisor. The second one is what happened to the dividend. And we know then the decimal point will be after that whole number. Boys and girls, what's the answer? If we have 84 divided by four, class, and everyone would say 21. Um, now you can choose when we get to 21, if you wanna stop there and you feel like students have a good understanding of this um, shifting and the multiplying creating that equivalent fraction, then you might want to say, so how did we get 21? I think it'd be an interesting um, number talk of how many of your students are actually going to get to 21. And I might say, well, because four times 20 is 80 and then I knew I needed another group of four or continue to build that fluency, um, but you won't get very far if you do it, end up turning that into a number talk. You won't have time to practice other slides with your five minutes. So maybe pick and choose what you have time for. So let's go through the next one. Uh, boys and girls, defend C. Boys and girls, turn and talk. We'll call on one student. I defend C, so 15 hundredths divided by 3 tenths. Um, is multiplied by an equivalent fraction, which is the same as one. So it'll give me the same thing um, as this. Class, defend F, right? And you can move your thing. So remember, one is the same as N over N. For all numbers, we chose 10 to make three, a whole, three tenths a whole number. So I should have added that to my description. So underneath each orange, we'll tell you how to do that. So we'll call each letter and then students will defend. Um, boys and girls read it with me, zero and 15 hundredths divided by three tenths is the same as one and five tenths divided by three. By what did we multiply three tenths and 15 hundredths to make the divisor three tenths a whole number? Think about it, class 10, they move it, they're correct. What happened with our first step, boys and girls? And then they would talk about how we multiplied three tenths by 10, which means it shifted to the left. The decimal point is going to be to the right of three tenths, making it three. Boys and girls, what happened here? Think about it. Class, we multiplied by 10, which means our number shifted to the left um, and our number got bigger, which means our decimal point made the number now one and five tenths. Boys and girls, what's the answer? Think about it. Class. 5 tenths. So remember this from our earlier quick practices that this is like saying 15 tenths. So I can even say 15 tenths divided by 3 equals 5 tenths. Or 1 and 5 tenths divided by 3 equals 5 tenths. Either one, but the more you recite it or you say it in the ways that we've been saying these numbers, the easier it's going to be for students. So you'll continue that all the way until you get to lesson 10. Now the only thing that's gonna change for lesson 10 and 11 is now we can multiply by either 10 or 100 depending on how many shifts we need to that digit to take. So if I'm here, I might say 42 divided by 6 tenths and I'm gonna say by what will I multiply it if I made now this 420 and I multiplied six. Boys and girls, 10. Okay, so this one all stayed the same, but then look if you see the different colors here um, that this all stayed very similar, but now I got here. Boys and girls, read it with me. 54 divided by 15 hundredths 
equals 5400 divided by 15. By what did I multiply it by, boys and girls? 100. So now they're going to talk about those shifts needing to have two shifts because we multiplied by 100. So what happened to my decimal point? And the arrows show that once I shifted the numbers, where did that decimal point end up? So notice again, all of these colors, that means that all of those blue slides would be for lesson 10 and all of the purple slides would be for a lesson 11. So the goal is that we have a quick pace and we can get through multiple of these in um, a five minute period. Keep in mind that the more you do this, the more you do capitalize on these quick practices, the better students are going to be during the unit. They're going to have more fluency with the skills. They're also going to um, build procedural fluency. You're gonna be able to move this on into pre, um, next units. But what we know is that students need oral rehearsal with some of these first steps or some of these little intermediate steps that often get in the way of building procedural fluency. It's rehearsing these little pieces that's going to help them put everything together. So enjoy and have fun doing quick practice.